RVing with the Maracas welcomes you to another edition of RV Hacks. We got a tow car. Hey Rhonda, you're driving the Kia again. Yeah. Where are you going? Yeah, we're taking the Kia to the Ford dealership to see if they'll trade for a tow car for our RV. Um, we're going to look at the Ford Fiesta and the Ford Focus and the uh, automatic transmission to see what we think of those. Um, I've driven the Ford Fiesta before, so I know that um, that one drives pretty good. So we're excited to get this taken care of. We're doing it. Gee, Rhonda, you're in a different car. Yeah, my brand new 2018 Ford Fiesta. It's an automatic transmission, and we're hoping it's going to be a really easy car to tow behind the RV. Well, it's much smaller than the Kia, but it has that key feature. It is towable. When looking at tow cars, you need to verify any claims of towability by reading the owner's manual for the specific car you're looking at. Rhonda did a lot of research on flat towable cars. At first we thought we would need a manual transmission, which are hard to find, or four-wheel drive, which is pretty expensive. My requirement was it had to be small as I wanted to keep our total length down. Hers was it had to be pretty new. The Ford Fiesta is small, has automatic transmission, is flat towable, and it's okay to drive for normal use. The Ford salesperson recommended someone that could add the required towing package to our new car. Since it was brand new and I had never done anything like adding the base plate required to tow the car, we got a quote and went with an expert. He highly recommended Blue Ox, so we went with that. The labor expense was for installing the base plate and the light kit, so all of the lights work together with the RV. We also purchased the actual tow bar and brake kit. We could have saved money but I was not ready to tear apart the front of a brand new car. Hooking the car up to the RV is just about the same as connecting any other trailer. We have the pink cord, which is the emergency brake in case the car is somehow detached. And then it's just the electric cord, the emergency cables, and the actual tow bar, which is very easy to attach. The silver mounts on the car also detach for normal driving. We got the Patriot 2 Blue Ox braking system. It basically just sits on the floor grabbing the brake pedal and pushing against the seat so it can manually push in the brake pedal when needed. It's powered by 12 volts so we had to add a plug connected to the RV since we have to disconnect the battery to tow it. So basically you just plug in the power and this wire is for the breakaway, the emergency brake override system that is installed but you just plug it in push the power button these brakes these lights start blinking you push set up and it does a cycle with the brake and basically it's ready to go that's all you do besides putting the car transmission in neutral all we have to do to tow the fiesta is remove the negative battery cable it's easy, just loosen the bolts on the battery and the ground. Uh, be careful not to lose a bolt like I did. We need to carry a couple of spares just in case. This is how the front of the car looks without the tow bars installed. The emergency brake release is a little goofy, but you don't notice much difference from stock. Well, first things first, you have to turn the brake on after you crank up the RV. Here we are, first time pulling our toad. We're pulling out of the driveway, so I am just making sure right now that the wheels of the car are turning, and it appears that they are. Everything looks like it's rolling nicely. Bikes are staying on. Let's see if the brake lights work on everything. See if you can get the car through the driveway and make that turn without killing our mailbox. There it goes, out the door, all the way out. Let's wait for those brake lights. Are we gonna get them? I don't know, there we are. Okay, Joe, how was it pulling the toad out of the driveway? Well, it's no problem. I can't even feel it's there. I see it in the backup camera, but when I plugged in the uh, Blue Ox braking system thing, 
it told me that the brake wasn't on, which was a good thing because we didn't think we had, we didn't realize or remember mm -hmm. really no. that we had to turn it on. It's pretty obvious once you think about it because there's no power out there and the brake system runs off of the power through our electrical plug into the car and obviously it was off. So we're on our way to Savannah. Um, we're going to stay at Skid Skidaway Island State mm -hmm. Park. Yes, yeah. Um, I will. Um, it's our wedding anniversary. Um, Thirty-seven years on the nineteenth. So this is our trip to celebrate thirty-seven years. Do that filming. Oh, I'm filming something down here. Oh, the get backup camera. There's the toad. It's rolling us. along. <laughs> yeah, we're very excited. Uh, like, I guess, how many feet are we now? 50 feet total, we think? Yeah, we're about 50 feet long. Yeah. So, let's see how it goes. So, how fast are we going? Oh, uh, about 64. And how does it feel pulling the car? I don't know. I can feel like I can tell it's there, but not, it's not horrible. It just feels different. So, how did it feel getting on the ramp with the car? No problem. No problem? Cool. It's pretty easy to set up and tow. Just be very detail oriented and follow a checklist. Just take it slow. We disconnected at the park office and reconnected at the dump station on the way home.